Here's Chase, you know Chase's butt crack. <laughs> yeah, <he> is. <laughs> He's just marking the studs. We've marked the intervals that we wanna do with painter's tape, just so we can visualize a little bit better what we're trying to do. Also, don't ever buy the Ryobi. <laughs> no, that's not the thing that's garbage. The stud finder is garbage. Well, we have a generic $10 piece of shit <laughs> stud finder. Oh, here it is. Oh my God, this thing is trash. Better luck just knocking on a wall. Yeah, honestly. seriously, this thing sucks. <laughs> and we finally bought our very own nail gun, something that we've been meaning to buy for a couple years. And for continuity around the house, here's our stair rail, our stairwell rail, our handrail up our staircase. Hi, Orla. I have another big brain move. If you saw my children's play area cabinet thing that I bought, that was a couple videos ago, I used paint from our new build that was stored under our house to paint it. And now we had, they had left us the stain that they used on the handrail. So I'm gonna use this same stain on the boards. If I sound like I have a cold, it's because our son, Mads, who's playing with the cookies, is sick and he has both of us sick now. <laughs> Okay, we just got back from Home Depot. Let's see here, let's pull out the old plans. We like drew out our whole thing. Okay, so we bought two half inch thick four by eight stain grade boards, four two by twos, eight feet long, and two two by fours, eight feet long. We have drawn all of our cuts, board one, board two. There are cuts for both and here they are. I moved it down according to the top panel, not to be where this is going to drill in. All right, let me fix it. I'm using these three inch exterior screws. Uh, we're not working exterior, but who gives a shit? You got what you got in your house, right? All right, guys, back with day number two of trying to install these shelves. Yesterday, I cut all the pieces, drilled the holes. But as you saw probably in the previous clip, I f***ed it up. I uh, drilled one of these holes in the wrong place. Don't know why. I'm just gonna drill some new ones. So uh, I'll be right back. Drilled some new holes. Let's put these things up. Four to six days later. Finally back to working on these shelves. It looks like I got one more oopsie. And now you guys are thinking to yourself, Chase, you're like a master carpenter. I know baby birds, but sometimes daddy gets things wrong. The big brain move I did was, I did not account for the length of this in my shelf diagram. So my shelves are exactly as long as these. So they're an inch and a half. My shelves are an inch and a half too short. So what I need to do is just shave these back about an inch and a half and should be fine. Another simple mistake and a simple solution. I think one of the last things we gotta do with cutting wood is gonna be, well, we got two more things. Don't, don't let me get ahead of myself. These, um, they just need to be shaved down a little bit. You know, those walls aren't plumb or anything. So what I need to do is just 
shave just a little bit off and get my circular saw, shave them down just a little bit, shave, shave, shave. Besides that, hopefully last up, uh, I really have a, about two more things left to do. I gotta cut the two by fours that go, they're gonna kind of support the middle of the shelves. These walls aren't plumb, of course, so, you know, I mean, if I built the walls, they would have been perfectly plumb. It's just basic science and geometry, you know? Yes, that's sarcasm. <laughs> so I'll just shave these down and then we'll have those ready. Uh, Taylor can condition them, stain them, and hopefully we can finally be done with this thing. It's been too goddamn long. For any big project, I always like to start with a big glass of hot creamer and just a splash of coffee. Really gets me going and ready to do things. So first thing I'm gonna do is just use this square to make a line very close to the edge, just as a reference to keep me going straight. All right, so this plastic safety piece here was not allowing me to get very close cuts. So I had to do was tape it back. Safest thing in the world? No. Moment of truth. It's a little tight. That's not too big of a deal. We can just hammer it in there. But no, actually it fits very well. Cool. And this is what I was talking about with uh, the wood. So there's about an inch and a half right here, obviously. So just shave that off and we should be good to go. Several days later. So looking at the footage, realized that I filmed myself putting these up, but I didn't explain anything. Come here closer. <laughs> I'll show you I'll show you what I did. A little closer up. I found about how high this need to be. So if you look here, this is about the height of the board that's gonna sit on here. So I went about half an inch down from there, and that was gonna be the top of my frame. So what I did was I went about half an inch down from this line where the top of the board's gonna be. I used my laser level to kind of create a couple lines as a reference for when I held this up here. Next what I did was I put this level on here, ensuring that it was staying level. I took my drill and I just carefully put it through these holes and made marks on the drywall to know where to drill um, to ensure that they lined up with the holes. And then I took the board down and I drilled my pilot holes into the studs. Now you could just take this, take a nail gun and just kind of keep it in place. That might be easier since these were all drilled into studs um, as opposed to the, the ones up there, they have anchors. Once I put it back up, I just use my driver and punch the screws right through into the studs and that's it. Ow. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Just, must you be right here? <laughs> you smell, you're kind of stinky. That's cause he has a fever, so he's been sweating. Are you sweaty? Matt. <gasps> Now it's the next day. I cut all my pieces, drilled my holes, and I'm finally gonna install these middle supports. Fun thing happened, this exploded in half when I was cutting it. Don't know why, scared the <coughs> me, pretty cool. All right, this next part does not have to be too precise. I'm just kind of getting them roughly in the middle and I'm just making some small lines to kind of just as guidance so I don't have to fuss too much with how square it is in there and so it's not at like a weird angle. I'm just gonna use a sledgehammer. These are cut slightly larger than they should be. I'm gonna use a sledgehammer to wedge it in there and then drive the, the screw rest of the way through into the wood. Doesn't help that this one's broken in weird shape, so. All right, so now let's uh, drill it in. Good 
que or. Oh hey, it's me, Taylor, making an appearance in my own video. I hope you guys enjoyed Chase's interlude. He really wanted to like be the captain on all those parts of the video. And I'm glad he did because I don't know how to do any of the stuff that he was doing. What I do know how to do and what I am gonna start doing is I'm going to treat all of our planks for our shelves and I guess get them prepared to... I'm gonna make it so that we can put them up finally and get our shelves in order. So I'm going to sand all of them, clean them, uh, condition them with oil-based wood conditioner. I'm using oil-based everything. Um, stain and then polyurethane. I think that's it. I'll show you everything I use as I go along. So to start, I am going to use, so I guess the lowest grit sandpaper I bought was 100. See how that goes, and then I'll bump up to 150, and we'll see how smooth that is. Um, I'm not a carpenter, so the goal is for these to look nice. I will try my best. Okay. First things first, I have my Black & Decker mouse sander. I'm going to put some new 100 grit sandpaper on here, and I'm just going to have at it. Also, if you didn't know what the holes were for on your sandpaper, because I didn't know until recently, it's so that the uh, suction holes in the bottom of your sander can actually suck up the dust. This thing's super old. It probably doesn't suck anything up. It probably just actually blows it all directly into my lungs somehow so that I get cancer. But other than that, I mean, yeah, line your holes up so that it can uh, suck up the dust. Okay, here we go for real. <laughs> Okay, now that I have sanded everything, I'm gonna use mineral spirits shaken up really nice in order to clean these boards. I'm just gonna put them on a cloth that I don't really care about and just wipe the boards. Okay, um... <laughs> I've moved all of these inside to my living room because my garage is too dusty now for me to want to finish them in there. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple things to them while they're laying on the floor in my living room. I am going to use a pre-stain wood conditioner on them by Verithane because I used mineral spirits on them and mineral spirits, I guess, are a solvent and solvents dry out wood. So now I'm going to recondition the wood so that the wood can accept a stain more evenly. Does that make sense? Okay, that's all I got. <laughs> So I have conditioned all of them now. I had Chase come and show me which surfaces were supposed to face outwards on each shelf because that was already predetermined. I super wasted my own time by sanding and prepping both sides of each board. But anyway, onwards we go. So now I'm gonna use this stain by Sherwin-Williams. I guess it's called Sherwood. It says a wiping stain, so I assume that means I'm going to wipe it on with the cloth and then wipe off the excess. And then I will put polyurethane on top. I'm feeling optimistic that we might get this done today. Ow! <laughs> I hope because I really just want our living room to stop looking like hot trash. <laughs> I'm gonna give the stain a stir. <laughs> I'm gonna give the stain a stir. So wood conditioner, at least the stuff I'm using, you allow it to penetrate the wood for a half hour, 30 minutes, and then you go ahead and you stain the wood. I'm just gonna use this lint-free cloth that I found in my closet. And then, as I understand it, you apply stain with the grain. 
This is kind of behaving differently than stains I've used. I don't know. I hope I'm applying it correctly. It's honestly not that big of a deal because these shelves are going to have things on them. They're shelves. If this is anything like painting, you can really mess up your stuff by touching it too much. So let me just kind of get the streaks out and move on. I'm going around doing a second coat of stain after the initial coat because the initial is like hardly visible. And as I've been doing this, I've realized that there is a correct way of doing it as there is with most things. Um, anyway, let me show you how I applied the stain in order to get it to look its best. So I saturate, <laughs> I saturate, I saturate my stain rag and then I rub it against the grain, get quite a bit on there. And I'm only doing two coats of stain. I'm not gonna do any more because I imagine it'll just get worse looking the more coats I apply. Okay, so now that I've got the stain applied, I'm going to, I guess, kind of flip to a slightly drier part of my rag. I'm going to, you see how it's like there's striations going this way because it's going against the grain. Now I'm just gonna wipe with the grain. So just kind of get some of that stain up. I'm gonna use the very technical term of smearing. I'm going to smear it with the grain. And see, see how that looks better? Now the stain in my opinion looks more even. I don't think I'm gonna overwork it. I think, you know, with a glossy finish on top, I think that'll be fine. Now I have the Varathane Ultimate Polyurethane Oil Base. Uh, I got it in a clear semi-gloss. Bibu, bibu. And I will show you what I got in order to apply because the stain set, or uh, this polyurethane says do not roll it on, which is usually, whoa. Oh. That got on my floor. No. Polyurethane on my floor. It's awesome. I love that. I love that. Thank you. This stuff says don't shake because you'll get bubbles. So I'm going to stir it with the stir stick, probably the wrong way. This reminds me of wood shop class. Okay, so I have a what is this? A handy painter, I guess. And uh, it said that this is good for all paint stains and sealants. Can't remember my thought process on this, but this is what I'm using. <laughs> and then I have this solvent resistant tray. So I'm just gonna dump some of this stuff in there and then I'm just gonna have at it. Boop, oh, <laughs> it doesn't fit. Oh, it like kinda, like kinda barely fits. This actually seems to be working pretty well. Um, oh, okay, I remember my thought process on this. We used one of these in order to like apply a uh, stain to our fence and it actually worked pretty well. You're supposed to let this stuff cure or dry or whatever, not sure which one, for four hours before you handle it. I don't think this stuff kind of self-leveling. Pretty sure it is, I mean, it's like polyurethane. It's like epoxy. The next morning. As you can probably tell, this board is trying to fly away. It's like, it's all crazy looking. So Taylor put some glue down, some Gorilla Glue construction adhesive. Uh, so I don't know if the nail guns can keep this down. I don't really want to trust it. So since we can't see up here, I'm just gonna put some screws into it. Hell yeah, boy. Uh, that way 
that don't go nowhere. You know, I have to, I have to like edit and bleep you out when you do that. <laughs> yeah. Let me. It's just you. more work for me <laughs> when you let say. Me, f it. Let me, and then I'm just gonna put some screws into it. That way, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. That's our son making noise. <laughs> wow. Thank you. You paused your movie. Better watch out, buddy. Oh. oh, you're recording me. Uh huh. Oh, say then I should hi. probably say what I'm using. I'm using the Gorilla Glue a heavy duty construction adhesive. There's glue on the floor. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, hold. Uh oh. Hi. Oh, okay. It's okay, little buddy. These, do these bottom ones need to be trimmed? These? No, those okay. are. Uh, you did the, those ones right? Yeah. <laughs> I did half the shelves right. Okay, got it. You did a good job nailing this into studs. I'm like draping my body weight on it. Um, how long are you supposed to hold that for? 30 seconds. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the, the bottom one right there, uh, it's looking a little sus. Okay, just have a bucket of like super hot water. We're just gonna wet this and then we're going to wrap it, my uh, painting drop cloth, and then we're gonna park the car on it. It's <laughs> <laughs> the heaviest thing we got. Makes it work. So these are done pretty much. I'm just going to go around the corners and the cracks and I'm just gonna fill it in with paintable silicone and then I'll take the wall color, which is white anyway, but it's an off-white, and I will paint on the silicone to kind of blend it in with the wall and then we're done. We decided to forgo that one because it's super warped, so I had a big brain move. I... I'm using the bottom, the panel that's supposed to go right here, I'm putting it on top of the bottom one. And then when we, oh, this is barely coming out. When we go to put the like front parts on, we're just not gonna have a bottom part and the front part's gonna hide the fact that there's no bottom panel. No one's gonna know. <laughs> You're gonna know. No one's gonna know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, crazy? <laughs> so now you can see how smooth that part looks as opposed to over here. Friends, after probably three weeks of working on this, it is finally done. We took one eighth inch thick sand grade particle board, sanded it down, treated it the same as we treated the actual panels, gone around, put silicone around everything, touched up the paint. We're super happy with the outcome. They aren't perfect, but we're super proud. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe, comment, tell us what you would do different, and hopefully we'll see you next time.